my lads just get straight into it again. This is the story of a man who was finally identified after 30 years. On the 18th of April 1991, a council worker in Bracetown County Mead was heading into like the council yard for work when he discovered the body of a man. Daddy immediately did not suspect foul play. He didn't appear to be dead that long. So they were actually able to take photos of his face and stuff from the post-mortem. Um, his body was obviously still in, in a good condition to be able to do that. The man had no idea on him. He was described as being between 45 and 50 years old. They said he was around five foot five. He had brown eyes and he had brown hair, but it was balding and the sides of it had started to go grey. He wore a grey herringbone tweed jacket that was titled Taldi Madrid. So when they say titled, I assume they mean like just the label on it was called that. And a white shirt called Luigi Rossi. Grey trousers and very worn black zip up boots that are, were a size eight. They made inquiries in the area and there had been a few potential sightings of him in a pub the night before. Some of the people said that they believed he spoke with maybe a Liverpool accent. Someone else said a Scottish accent and they said they just couldn't really place the accent. Gardy came to the conclusion that he was sleeping rough. But it was also discovered that he may have attended a GAA match in the days before his death. They thought that maybe a family member or his childhood, you know, his childhood connection or something brought him to the area. Unfortunately, though, the investigation led nowhere. The man was buried in St. Mary's Cemetery in Navan with a stone basically just saying, you know, unidentified. An inquest was held in November 1991 to kind of look back at the, you know, investigation and see if they could come to any conclusions, but unfortunately they couldn't. In 2021, his body was exhumed to see that if they could take DNA from it. Obviously, there had been a lot of DNA advances in the last 30 years and they wanted to see if they, you know, could now develop a DNA profile. But unfortunately, the Forensic Science Ireland came back to say that it was one of the rare cases where they couldn't. Obviously, the body had been too damaged or whatever in the time being. Then last year, a portrait artist, Lynn Kennedy, was asked to look at the postmortem photos of his face and make a, a sketch of the unidentified man. Garda Sergeant Alan Dowley was the original um, lead on the investigation and he was like instrumental in making sure that these photos had been taken, you know. The sketch was done and it was featured on Crime Call. He's all no Crime Call at this stage, I'm always talking about it, I love it. And so it was featured in the November 2022 episode of Crime Call. Obviously all the description, the jacket that he wore, this sketch of the man. And up in Donegal, a man named Michael Leonard was watching Crime Call. And he said that the man on the screen jumped out at him. He checked with other people he knew and he was pretty sure. And he went to Eileen McGinty, who was in her 80s and from Mount Charles in Donegal. He said, I'm going to show you something. And he handed a photo of the sketch on his phone to Eileen. And she immediately said, Jesus, that's our Paul. Paul McGinty was born on the 17th of June, 1940. And like many other young Irish men, he went abroad to England to look for work. He first off went to London and then eventually settled in Coventry. In 1987, he did come back for one of his brother's funerals. And Eileen would say that she would keep in touch with her brother in Coventry at kind of like Easter and Christmas, they would talk on the phone. However, she said that in 1991, when she found the house where he was lodging, the landlord said that he had vanished. He had been working as a labourer and it appears that in 1991, he had, was out of work and don't know why, but must have decided to come back to Ireland. And so on the 8th of April, he left his lodgings. He left all his belongings there. He put money for the week ahead, uh, the rent, on the mantelpiece for the landlord to be able to pick up. And he just left. And 10 days later, he would be found in Meath. Michael Leonard, who was the guy who knew him on Crime Call, his brother, John Leonard, was actually working in Coventry with Paul. And this is how he knew him straight away because he had seen him, you know, several times when he would have went over there. And he would even say that, like, when he vanished, for years, Michael and John would be like, you know, God, whatever happened to Paul? And it is said that his friends did try to report him missing over there, but that the police just kind of weren't interested. Maybe like that, they just kind of thought, oh, he's Irish, he's gone back to Ireland or something. I don't know. But maybe if there was a bit of more liaising, this could have been sorted before 30 years had passed. Eileen, who's now in her 80s, thanked Alan Dowley for his help in, you know, ensuring that the photos were there and that that's how this eventually was solved. So finally, after 30 years, Eileen now knows where her brother was. 
I'm not really sure why he went to Mead and didn't go home. Could it have been kind of a, a pride thing? Or like, did he think maybe he'd just come over to Mead first and then try get some work here and then, you know, work up enough money to kind of do what he wants to do here? They also don't say how he died. So um, was it natural causes or something else? We don't really know. So just kind of coming on from Paul's case, I was looking up a few other bits of information. So we didn't have like a database. We have, when when Paul was identified, there were 27 unidentified bodies in Ireland. And now with Paul identified, there are now 26, but it is believed that there could be more. There was no database for these. And it was believed that like coroners weren't even kind of like able to talk with each other to kind of liaise and, and figure things out. So in an August 2022 Irish Times article, the first ever effort to quantify the, you know, the different missing people and stuff was being done. And so this is when the database is now being established. Justice uh, Minister for Justice Helen McEntee is, is trying to lead the way on this in getting an actual DNA database put up, which I think is just mad. It's like obviously 2022, 2023 is late in the game to be doing it, but at least look at the positives Casey it's it's being done so this was obviously before Paul was found so here there's 27 so it said there were 13 whole remains and 14 partial remains that were unidentified as part of this new central database coroners will actually have to like input annually their their reports and their findings about unidentified bodies there's another little um Claire Clark Keane so her sister Priscilla Clark went missing in Wicklow she disappeared in 1988 and so she said she actually went to the grave of this man. So obviously, you know, this is something that's close to her heart. She doesn't know where her sister is. And she said, like, she had been at this man's grave and she didn't even know his name and that it shouldn't have taken this long to find it. And while she was in the graveyard, she said that the undertaker actually said that, like, God, oh, there's more of them. You know, there's more of them here. There's a few, like, there's a, he said, there's a few of them buried here. Like, there's obviously more unidentified remains there as well. And as of this article, there are 897 people missing on the island of Ireland. Bye guys, I won't keep you. Um, hoping the these videos will all be out kind of like pew, 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 straight away. So I know the logical thing would probably be to be like space them out, Casey. But I know even though it takes me, it can take me ages to get to do videos. I also like to just get them and get them out there. I'm not really, I I don't, I'm very impatient. Um, please let me know what you think of these different cases that I'm after doing, and if you have any case suggestions, as always do let me know and as I said I'm actually working on a missing persons case now at the moment I hope you're all well and keeping keeping well keeping safe and we will see you in the next video thanks bye